Now we're moving on to music notation. This will explain how we write out music so that musicians can read it and play it without ever needing to hear it first. The first step is to understand the staff. It has five lines and four spaces, and we place notes either on top of a line or in a space. But before we know exactly what notes are on the staff, we have to add something else. There are two symbols called clefs. There's one for high notes and one for low notes. The symbol we use for high notes is called the treble clef. And the symbol we use for low notes is called the bass clef. Now when you're drawing the treble clef, I want you to think of three things. P, six, and J. Now what you're gonna do is start your treble clef slightly above the top line Bring it all the way down, stopping at the first line. Now again, this isn't going to be as fancy as what you see on the left, because that was generated by uh, the computer. So we just want to be able to write the clefs so that they are discernible from any musician that's reading it. From there, you're going to add the right side of your B and stop around the fourth line. Now after that point, you're immediately going to start drawing a six and wrap it around the second line. So we've got our P around the fourth line, immediately come into a six, wrap it around the second line. And at that point, you can add your J at the bottom with a little fancy curly cue. And once you practice this for quite a while, you can start to shape it a little bit so that it looks more like the computerized version that you see on the left. Um, and after practicing it a few times, you'll be able to do it pretty well. Um, you might have some slight variations, uh, but as long as it's discernible to a musician that's reading it, as long as it doesn't look like this blue one I'm about to draw, then you should be good. So if it's just like that, it's a little confusing. But again, if you start with your P, you have a 6, add your little curly cue at the bottom, uh, you should be good to go. And now we're moving on to the bass clef. As you can probably tell, it's going to be a lot easier to draw. So what we're going to do is start on the fourth line, draw a little circle, easy enough. Now at that point you're going to swoop up to the right, back down, and slice through that second line. Again, it doesn't have to be as fancy as the computerized version on the left, it just has to be readable by musicians. We're going to then follow it up by two dots on the right side that go on either side of that fourth line. Now that fourth line is F. And you can also call the bass clef the F clef for this reason. It's going to tell you where F is. So again, we're going to start with a little circle on the fourth line, bring it up to the top line, swoop it down past that second line. And I went a little bit too far, but that's okay. It's still readable by musicians. Followed up with two dots on the right side, and you're good to go. Again, the more you practice this, the better you'll get at it, possibly the fancier you can get as well. But again, as you're just handwriting music, as long as it's readable by any musician, you should be good. When we are using the treble clef, we use the following set of notes. For notes that are on a line, we have E, G, B, D, and F. An easy way to remember this is every good boy does fine. For notes that are in a space, we have F, A, C, E. So if it's in a space, it spells face. When we are using the bass clef, we use the following set of notes. For notes that are on a line, we have G, B, D, F, and A. An easy way to remember this is good burritos don't fall apart. For notes that are in a space, we have A, C, E, and G. An easy way to remember that is all cows eat grass. For some extra practice, in the comments section below, leave some of your own ideas for remembering the names of the lines and spaces for these two clefs. We can also combine the treble clef staff and the bass clef staff. We call this the grand staff. These two clefs are connected by a bracket on the left hand side. Now as you can probably imagine, there are more notes in existence than are actually on the treble clef or bass clef staff. What we can do is extend the treble clef or bass clef staff above and below by adding more lines. And we call these new lines ledger lines. I'll just draw a few for you. We 
We can extend the treble clef down. We can extend the bass clef up. We can extend the treble clef up. Or we can expand the bass clef down. And there's really an infinite number of ledger lines that you can add to account for all the notes. Besides this bracket on the left side, there's actually a special note that also connects these two clefs. And this note is called middle C. It gets its name from being right in the middle of the grand staff. It's also the fourth C that appears on a full-sized 88 key piano. And I'll draw that here for you now. So this C would be one ledger line below the treble clef or one ledger line above the bass clef. Now even though they're in different clefs, they are actually the same pitch if you were to play them on the piano. Again, this note is called middle C. Now go ahead and practice drawing clefs and naming notes on the included PDF files. Feel free to submit your work via email to get personalized feedback of your work.